Veronica's wedding dress, a couple boxes of pictures that we didn't have in digital form. Okay. And my Taekwondo uniforms, like in my dad's closet. Okay. Everything else we owned fit in our van with the eight of us. Wow. Our six kids and Veronica and I. Everything we owned fit in the van and we drove and moved to Mexico. Wow. <laughs> I had never, I like, we moved into this town where our mission group had been for a long time, like maybe 18 years at that point. And, um, you know, the town didn't even have a stoplight. Like we, we would go into these ranchos, these little adhitos out in the desert. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and um, there's about 50 of them. And when our mission group started going, some of them hadn't seen anyone from the Catholic church in like three years. Wow. Yeah. I, and over that 18 years, our missionaries have, have built a chapel on every one of those adhitos. So now we can go there and like, there's one priest in the town, but he can't make it out. So we would go out and like do catechesis for the kids, you know, uh -huh. and for the adults, like, you know, very culturally, culturally Catholic, but not understanding yes. their faith or practicing in the true like, yes. teachings of the faith, right? So praise God, we could we could be his hands and feet and help the church, help the, the priest and do whatever we could do there. But yeah, so when we moved there, it was it was radical because it was so fast. Like when we moved, we moved during the week when we got there. That Saturday, we went to the baseball field just to like meet some of the local kids and play. Uh -huh. And I started doing ministry that night. Like wow. a bunch of them came up to me and they like were like, you know, I, I, I've been doing Taekwondo, so I was pretty in shape and whatever. And they wanted me to teach them how to like get muscles and teach them weightlifting <laughs> and teach them all this stuff. And, and uh, so I started like for the young, the young adult dudes, I started doing like weightlifting out of the mission house. And huh. then uh, I felt it on my heart. Um, to start a taekwondo school for them okay and i was like look this can't be from the lord like this is just me because i love taekwondo you uh -huh. know and so i didn't do it like i, I kept pushing back and like mm -hmm. all these kids all like it was like obvious that that they needed this they didn't have any organized sports in this town uh -huh. you know and um i fought back for like two or three weeks and then i was uh i was i say talking to but I was asking John Bosco, St. John Bosco, uh, what he thought, because he really felt called to working with young men and uh -huh. he did a lot for young men. And, 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 and the reason I said young men is because in Mexico you go in there and like dudes will not even step into churches right now. Really? Like guys are just not going into churches. They're not going into mass. They're not like, and so it was obvious that I was called to work with these young men. Uh -huh. And so, I asked John Bosco, like, look, please intercede for me. Please pray and ask our Lord if he wants this to be done, that is done. Uh -huh. And I made one phone call home and talked to a friend at the Taekwondo school and told him what I was thinking. Eight days later, I had everything donated to start a Taekwondo wow. school. Wow. Everything to start a gym. Wow. My brother drove it down to the border. I drove up to the mm -hmm. border and got it, came down. And it's more than some small Taekwondo schools even have to start. Like... We had all the equipment we needed. We, uh -huh. we found a place in Saltillo that we could get uniforms and we started doing Taekwondo lessons. You know, we weren't charging or anything, of course, like we're, do, we're doing it for the young kids and then doing like kickboxing for the adults. Uh -huh. And then the women wanted to, wanted to be trained in something. So we started doing weightlifting classes for the women and Gold's Gym of Houston donated two tons worth of weights. Wow. And so we literally started this gym that some woman in town uh, who had an extra space loved what we were doing because we were doing it out in the field at first. Uh -huh. And she gave us a space to use. And so we named it Gymnasio de San Juan Bosco, which is Jim, uh, John Bosco's gym. Yes. And uh, bro, that was in 2016. It's still there. Wow, that's when, awesome. When we felt called to leave, one of the guys who the Holy Spirit just rocked and had this rad conversion, started bringing his family to mass, loving his kids, quit uh -huh. drinking, quit. Like he, when we were leaving, came to us and said he felt called to being a missionary to his own people uh -huh. because at the gym, three nights a week, we would stick around after training. Two nights, I would have like a prepared prayer, like some teaching about the church, and I would prepare it 
pass it out to all of them in, in Spanish because I couldn't speak Spanish. Okay, so you were there, <laughs> but saying, you couldn't speak. And it. since ministry started so fast, I didn't have time to study Spanish. And okay. and my my bride was fluent in Spanish, so uh-huh. it was like a major crutch. If we needed something, she would just yeah, she would speak right. Yeah. Um, but you know, the Lord wants it done, man. Like He, I it was it was my turn to talk to this group. Uh, I don't know, man. Maybe forty dudes. And I really felt called to like what I was going to talk about that night was about being a man. Like it was about, and so my wife was up there to translate for me uh-huh. and uh, I started speaking and I just started speaking in Spanish and I talked for like 20 something minutes. You're kidding me. No, oh, bro. And I got done and I looked back at my wife and she had backed up to the back of the stage, you know? And I'm like, did you understand anything I said? Her eyes are like this big. <laughs> and she's like, every word. And like dudes were coming up to me, like crying, bloodshot eyes, hugging uh-huh. me. And I'm like, bro, that was the Holy Spirit. Like, I have no idea what I just said to you. Like, <laughs> wow. And so those nights at the gym, when it was uh-huh. just us dudes, I would prepare these different things and mm-hmm. I would fumble through trying to read it, but mm-hmm. they would all have a copy. So they knew what I was saying. And same thing, multiple times afterwards, I would look up thinking I was done and I would just continue speaking. Uh-huh. And I would like make eye contact with somebody and they would just like start bloodshot eyes and like, and the Lord would just speak to them, man. And, and I would have no idea what I said, you know? Wow. And I would tell them that. I'd be like, bro, I have no idea what I just told you. That's between you and the Lord. Like, you need to go back to that. Like, wow. whatever he just told you, you need to sit with that, you know? Um, and it's just that, like, w- for whatever reason, this is the way Jesus chose it to be. Like, he said, all authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. Now you go and make disciples of all nations. Like, why does he want to use us? I don't know, but but that's what he that's what he chose to do, you know? There's nothing, there's nothing that anybody needs from me. Wow. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's nothing that we can benefit anybody. They just need Jesus, and he needs uh-huh. his hands and feet. Like, he chose to do it this way. So we get to just see miracles, and our kids got to see this stuff. Yeah. You know, we're down there. When we moved into our house down there, our backyard was like dirt and cinder blocks. And in our house here in Kingwood, we had a Lego room, you know, a train <laughs> set. And, yeah. and we moved down there thinking like, oh my goodness. And they're out there and they make a restaurant with cinder blocks and the day of sticks that are uh-huh. like pizza. And the kids are having a blast. <laughs> the grace the Lord gave them and gives them, you know, is just phenomenal. And so praise God, they get to see the reality of God, the presence of the Holy Spirit, not like in a story 2000 years ago, you know, they get to see the reality that like he is on fire, like he is rocking and he wants to be present. And he just, he just needs us to say yes, 